welcome everybody and let's uh let's begin i saw some comments about the uh the uh conference the fx street uh conference uh any anybody going to that here who's going to the conference this year yeah how you doing cvj we actually met yesterday great to meet you excellent so some people are going to the conference great if it's your first time you're going to love it uh i was there uh i think it was last year it was last year great conference Great thing about the FX Street Conference is uh, it's very different than other conferences. A lot of conferences are just going there listening to lecture after lecture after lecture. Uh, the reason why I did it last year was because it's so unique. You uh, you actually listen to lectures, but then you have uh, a full day or two worth of uh, trading with these instructors, so you can learn the le learn the method and then uh, actually start trading the method. Yeah, it's a great uh, great experience if you're able to do it. All right. Today's topic is multiple time frame analysis, the proper way to do that. Very important you do that. If you do it the right way, you can absolutely stack the odds in your favor, uh, if you, but there, there are plenty of wrong ways to do it, and typically that will lead to handing your account over to somebody else who's doing it the right way. So let's, uh, let's get started here, and, and we'll, we'll kind of jump right in, okay? Now, I'm going to start out by showing you a uh, – I'm going to show you one – one uh, page here, one slide, and then we're going to go. And then we're going to spend the rest of the time on the charts. Okay, so let me uh, take a picture of this for you. All right, can everybody see that? Okay, should be able to see that picture now. All right, great. So I want to you, share something with you. This will just take a minute. Uh, this is an email that came in to me on Monday, so just about three, four days ago, uh, from one of our one of our XLT members, one of our uh, trading members. So Sam, I was in the Sunday Forex uh, session. Uh, I led that session. I took the long position on Pound Swiss that we reviewed in the class. I took two more contracts and was happy to find myself up, up $2,800 by 6 a.m. Tuesday morning. Thanks for the great class and for pointing out the setup on Pound Swiss because I usually don't look at any but the majors. Wiley Jones. Okay, take a look at the setup. Uh, we had a Sunday session last, uh, last Sunday and we identified that the Swiss, the Pound Swiss, was declining. It was actually right here. This red candle, that is the Sunday, uh, the, or that's, uh, yeah, that's, that's the candle, uh, that, uh, wh that's where price was when we started the session on Sunday. Okay? Now, if we look to the left, we see that we have a drop base rally. Look at the strong rally out of this level daily chart. Okay? Uh, I'm going to give you just a quick kind of two minute version of this. Okay, so why did we buy here? Why were we looking to be buyers here? Because price had reached a level where the chart had told us demand exceeds supply. Right? We have our pattern, not rally base rally, but drop base strong rally. Okay, that meant, now understand what for, for newer people, when prices rally away from this level as they did here, understand this can only happen because there's actually a lot more willing demand here than supply. In other words, we have a supply and demand imbalance. Okay, when we scroll over to the right, we came into Sunday's session and price was sitting right there. What did that mean? That mean that a that that a, a forex market speculator was coming into the market and making a very big mistake. Two very big mistakes. The two mistakes are this. Number one, they were selling after a big drop in price and selling right into a price level where demand exceeds supply. Okay? That is not something that you want to do. Uh, you will lose consistently according to the laws of supply and demand. So because the odds of prices turning here were so high, because the risk to buy here was as low as it possibly could be, and that because we had uh, the reward was pretty nice as well, uh, we buy right here at this black line with a stop below uh, uh, the bottom black line. Okay, And the trade uh, worked out very well for Wiley Jones and, and others in the group. Today, I'm going to show you exactly how we arrived at this opportunity and others. Okay, let's go back to the chart so we can do that. I wanted to kind of show you a, uh, a before and after there. Okay, so let's take a look. Yeah, I saw there was some intervention there. Of course, that came in after uh, that came in after uh, the, the play with the trade was entered. Okay, um, typically with news that will that's just going to speed up what was going to happen anyway. Okay. Now remember, it, we do run through a, a little probability scoring uh, system. Uh, not a, it's, it's pretty simple. 
but uh, that's how we determine which levels we want to take and more importantly which levels we want to make sure we ignore so let's uh, let's let's take a look at the charts here so I've got the charts back up you should be looking at the dollar Swiss okay <clears throat> now the three steps that we're going to uh, make sure we do remember the topic today is multiple time frame analysis so we're always going to start now I'm going to do this for uh, the, the first way we're going to do it is for kind of swing trading right uh, longer term day trading slash swing trading and we want to do this step one trend okay what is the trend on the daily chart and you know what, it, it's as simple as just putting a 50 period moving average or some bigger moving average on your chart. Um, that'll be fine, okay? All right, anything like that. And, and start, with, start with step one here, you know, what is the trend on the daily chart? That's going to tell us whether we want to, you know, be buyers or sellers, uh, you know, what side of the market are the odds, you know, on our favor. So we want to start there with the daily charts. Here we see that the moving average is sloping down, right? Just take a quick glance at the a quick glance at the moving average. If it's sloping down, uh, you're in a downtrend. If it's sloping up, you're in an uptrend. Don't make it too complicated. The big challenge here is to keep things very simple. So, trend is down. Uh, that that tells us right off the bat we might be we might want to be thinking short position. So, step one, daily chart. What is the trend? Step number two. I'm going to quickly go to a larger go to the larger time frame here. Okay. Okay. So step two is going to be always to go to the larger time frame, and I'll show you exactly why we do this. Okay. I'll write it in here for you to keep it to keep it simple. Go to the larger time frame. Okay. Larger time frame demand and supply. Okay. So step two, go to the larger time frame. If we started with the daily, go to the weekly here. And here we want to figure out where's our larger time frame <coughs> demand and supply. There's a reason for that. Okay. Very important reason. So on the daily chart, we see we're in a downtrend, right? Okay. So we're thinking that we want to be a seller. But when does every up, when does every downtrend, for example, uh, stop, you know, end? And where does every uptrend begin? At support and resistance. Real support and resistance, which means real supply and demand. If you're not familiar with the term supply and demand as far as trading goes, um, you might want to review one of my prior recordings. I go over that. Uh, in detail, okay. So, uh, so the reason why we go to this larger time frame is because even though we're in a downtrend on the daily, what happens if we're, you know, where are we with with the in the supply demand curve on the larger time frame? So when we come to the to the larger time frame, selling short in this area doesn't look too good, okay? Because look at where we're at. What we want to do very mechanically is come to the larger time frame and mark off our bigger picture demand and supply levels. So when I do that, I'm going to start right here with current price, and I'm going to scroll down and go left until I hit my first drop base rally, which is right there. So once I do that, I'm going to draw in a couple lines like we always do and mark off my demand zone. Okay, and we don't have to be, you know, you can just do it like this. Okay, here's my level. Now when I scroll up current price, let me blow this chart up a little bit, I want to keep scrolling up until I get to my nearest rally base drop, right? My fresh one. Well, pretty fresh. So this is not, I'm not interested in this, drop, base, drop, right? We want to come up. Here's a rally base drop. Here's another one up here, okay? Now, this upper one's pretty pretty fresh. We wouldn't expect prices to go through that. Uh, that's a pretty solid level. Looks to be a pretty solid level because prices haven't been back to that level yet, okay? All right? So given... Oops, here, let me, uh, let me get the chart. All right, so here's the daily chart. Here's the uh, weekly chart. I'm sorry. I, th I thought you could see all the charts at once uh, when I was doing this. My fault. Okay, there you go. All right, so now we're on the larger time frame of the same market. Okay, so we saw that we're in a downtrend on the daily chart. But even though we're in a downtrend on the daily chart, um, we, we need to know where we're at with regard to larger time frame demand and supply. Okay, so you should be able to see the weekly chart now. Okay, let me scrunch this up for you. So step two, larger time frame demand supply. Now, when we when we look at where we're at, we see current price. Are we closer to larger time frame demand or larger time frame supply? Okay, in other words, should we still be aggressively shorting this market 
Um, and when we come to that larger time frame, we see that maybe that's not such a good idea, right? Does everybody understand that? Okay, you see how we're, we're much closer to larger time frame demand than we are larger time frame supply, okay? So given, given this, uh, given this fact right here of this, of this larger time frame chart, I still want to be shorting in this market, but nowhere near current price. When I go and do step three, which is actually finding, pinpointing my, my entry point, I'm going to be looking uh, well above current price, okay? Because I don't want to be selling short anywhere near this larger time frame demand, just like I don't want to be buying anywhere near this larger time frame supply. But the only, the only way I'm going to know that, where I'm at, is if I go to this larger time frame. So now, let's do step number three. And don't worry, there's only three steps, okay? So now you're looking at a chart, uh, an hourly chart. So for step number three, when we actually go and pinpoint our, our, our trade, our, our entry point, um, we're going to come to something like an hourly chart. It doesn't have to be an hourly chart. It could be like a larger intraday time frame. Okay. All right. So we're going to step through. We're going to find our entry point off the smaller time frame. Okay. So now I'm on a small, I'm on a smaller time frame, 60 minute chart. All right. Yeah, Ed, uh, I see your question there. When we get, when we get down to that level on the, uh, on the Swiss, yes, we'd be looking for a long position. That's why we don't want to look for short positions anywhere near that. So when I get to the hourly chart, I'm just going to scrunch this up a little bit. Well, I'm not going to scrunch it up too much. Let me blow the chart up a little. So now I see current price, right? 104.29. All right. When I look to the left, remember, I want to look left now and find my nearest rally-based drop that is fresh. And when we say fresh, we mean a, a, a supply level that has not been revisited yet. We want the odds stacked in our favor. So I'm going to start here. I'm going to scroll left. Okay, I come to this congestion area, but that's not really rally-based drop. And I'm going to keep going up the price ladder until we get to this. Rally, base, strong drop in price. Just the opposite of that pound Swiss that I showed you we took earlier in the week. I'm going to wrap my supply, my supply lines around this to create that sell zone, all right? And I see we're right around 106 on the hourly chart, which is well-placed on the larger time frame curve. So now what I've done is we've identified that the daily trend is down, okay? We're just, you know, we're putting some rules to this, some structure. Without rules and structure, I think it's impossible to make money trading, okay? Uh, that's just my opinion, though. There you go. So we, we saw that step one, our, our, the daily trend is down. I'm just using a 50-period moving average there. I went to the larger time frame to see where our larger time frame demand and supply levels were, which tells me whether that daily downtrend is likely to end soon or not. And it also shows me where to look for my entry points. So if I'm thinking of shorting because we're in a downtrend, I want to make sure we're shorting far away from that larger time frame demand level. And so when I come down to the hourly chart to pinpoint my entry price, um, we find that here, okay? Now, what do we like about this level? Well, what's, what's the best looking thing about this level? Anybody want to throw it out there? What, what's so good about this supply level up here? Yeah, strong drop. So everybody that answered that has probably been in these, uh, probably been in these sessions before. So nice, nice job there, okay? Yeah, FID, uh, that, that's what we're doing now, okay? All right. So strong drop from this level. Uh, indicates a big supply and demand imbalance up here. Okay. The other thing that's nice about it is it's well placed on the curve in the larger picture. Let me just go back to that larger time frame. All right. Uh, right here. And if we look at where 106 is, it's going to be right here. Okay. So we're shorting right here, you know, nice and far away from this big demand level, which means we have a nice profit margin on the downside. All right. Now, you may think that that hourly level that I just put up there, you know, is kind of far away from current price. You know, that, that entry is not going to take place for a while. But here's the thing. Uh, you know, in the, in the, in the program we, we run, you know, we have four sessions a week. And by putting these types of levels on, on all, you know, a lot of different pairs, there's always a trade right around the corner. Okay? All right? The key, the, the key is to looking at, you know, non, you know, somewhat non-correlated pairs and applying a very high probability strategy, all right? You're still going to get a, a decent trade count, but, you know, most of your opportunities are going to be really high quality, okay? 
So that's kind of our three-step process that we want to focus on when we're doing kind of longer-term uh, day trading or swing trading or even position trading for that matter. All right. Yeah, we're going to look at some other markets too. Okay. Yeah, so if we're going to look at uh, for a buy, we actually, in the Sunday session, we had this level down here. Uh, I can show it to you in just a second. Well, let, let's move on. We, I think you saw the lines down there. Um, yeah, so if we're, you know, once we hit that big weekly demand level, yeah, then we'd be looking to buy pullbacks to drop these rally demand levels. All right, Bill. Yeah, let me answer a couple more questions here. Uh, SW, I, I would, I wouldn't say there is, I would say there is no difference. Um, you know, understand, um, again, if you've ever been, uh, heard, heard one of my sessions, uh, you know, when you have some free time, uh, go back and listen to some of the recordings, but, you know, I started my career on the floor of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange handling institutional order flow uh, in the Forex market. And you quickly understand that even though this is, there, there's so much news involved in this market, that at the end of the day, the movement of price is simply a function of an ongoing supply and demand equation. All right? That means that opportunity exists when this simple and straightforward equation is out of balance. All right? Therefore, if you, if you believe that, then you'll also understand that the most significant turns in price happen at price levels where supply and demand is most out of balance. Okay? What does that picture look like on a price chart? Because at the end of the day, that's all that's going to matter to you. Uh, it's right here. Okay, I showed you a trade that worked out from earlier in the week. Um, here's, here's the next uh, setup in this market, dollar Swiss. All right. So again, keep keep your focus on on the orders and all that. Um, yeah. So Jason, yeah, I would I would say we're we're complete with this one. Then what you want to do here is, you know, again, your your what, what we do is, uh, you know, sell short at the bottom line with a protective uh, buy stop just above the area, and then our targets below, and that's going to be according to your trading plan. Are you looking for you know two to one to your first target, three to one to your first target? When exactly do you move your stop to break even? You know, those things are important. Okay, uh, Victor. Yeah, you you, you want to find you know, ideally the levels that where your your black lines are close to each other. Again, in the program we spend a lot of time going over a very mechanical way to enter, to to do this. Uh, but I can give you a lot of that here in our short time together. Um, what I'm doing is making sure that the majority of candle bodies are in between the two lines. Right, that's where the meat of the order flow is. So when we sell short here, okay, understand that we would be selling short to someone who's buying after a rally in price, big mistake, right? Uh, you, you would never walk into a car dealership and say, hey, that, that $20,000 car, I like it so much, I want to pay you thirty for it, right? You would never do that. Don't do it here. So that person's making a big mistake. Mistake number two, they're buying right into a price level where supply exceeds demand, all right? Uh, we want to be a seller to that novice buyer. That's how markets work. It's the people that know that get paid from the people that don't. It's really a transfer of accounts. Okay. You could buy up to that target, uh, Bill, so long as you found a low risk entry uh, to do that. We'll look in a, I'll look in a second here. Okay. Yeah, Rob, you would, you would, the same three step process, just switch the time frames and, and do the same thing. Okay. And, and Rob, you would do that if you want to make, make, uh, you know, reduce the risk a little bit. Um, of course, you might also reduce the reward, but if you want to bring these black lines a little closer to each other, just do the same thing on smaller time frames, okay? And Victor, yes, if, if if the lines are too wide, meaning your distance from entry to stop is too wide, just, uh, it, yeah, ignore that level and move on to another one. That's one of the biggest things uh, that, you know, one, one of the most frequently asked questions that I get, and what you have to understand is, you know, out of every 10 levels, supplier demand levels I'll see on a chart, I'll probably ignore eight of them, Right? I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm only looking for low risk, high reward, and high probability opportunity, and that is certainly not available offered uh, with every level on a chart. Okay, Jose, great question there, um, and the answer is it all depends on what kind of profit margin you're looking for, right? Okay, it all depends on what kind of profit margin you're looking for. If you ever been to the racetrack, right? I'm not. A, I'm not a big. Uh, uh, gambler, but if you've ever been to the racetrack, I mean, if you have three horses that are relatively equal, which one are you going to bet on? You're going to bet on the one that's giving you the best payout, right? Okay? It's it's the same thing here. Take that same logic into here. All right? We, that That's the beauty of trading. 
you know, uh, uh, people people often compare trading to a casino, and uh, and then there's a lot of people that say, oh, don't do that. Trading's not gambling. Well, it is. I mean, what what's what's the difference? But and I and, and I don't want to use gambling in like a negative sense, but it, it's speculating, right? Think about it. When uh, you know, when Pepsi or one of the you know Pepsi or Coca Cola buys commercial time at the Super Bowl, they're putting out a lot of money hoping for a return. There's no guarantee on that return, right? So they're, they're speculating as well. But but how about what we do, uh, which, which is speculating in the markets? This, uh, you know, compare this to how things are run in Las Vegas, right? Imagine being able to, to sit at the blackjack table and uh, only put your money on the table after you see the cards. And then have the ability at any point to put as much money down as you want, right? Imagine those odds, right? Uh, that's what we have here in Vegas, I mean, in, uh, in, in trading, all right? The problem is a lot of people don't have discipline, and that's, that's a big issue, okay? Yeah, you don't have to be in the market all the time, all right? The people that have the patience and discipline are the ones who get paid from the people who don't, okay? Jack, uh, a couple more questions here, and then we'll move on. Uh, if the supply-demand level gets fully penetrated through a long wick, then you get a reversal signal. Would you take... Whoops, let me just see. Would you take the trade? We're still so good. Uh, Jack, if, if price went through a level, I would say that level's no good anymore. Because if it was a strong level, uh, it is physically impossible for price to go through it. You know what I mean? So I would go look for the next one. And if you're finding that that is happening, you know, too often for you, that means you're simply looking uh, in the middle of the curve. So you want to go further out to the extremes, okay? And so, so practice what we did on the weekly chart there, okay? All right, let me just... Uh, Okay, here's a good example. Someone asked to someone asked to show uh, an example that wouldn't wouldn't be good. Well, here's one right here. Okay, here's a rally based drop. Here's a drop based rally demand level. Okay, now let me recapture capture the chain uh, the screen. I can't talk here. Pretty early in the morning here in Southern California. Um, I don't live here though. Okay, so take a look at those two areas right there. So notice. Rally base drop supply and demand right here. But in both cases, if we were to draw lines in these, look what happens. Both times, this, this thing fails miserably, right? I'm just going to draw some lines around that one, some lines around that one. All right. Now, notice when price came down to this level. Okay, there we go. You should be able to see it now. So, notice that when price came down, uh, to one second, let me fix this. There we go. When price came down to this level here, it, it blew right through it. Well, it stopped there for a little bit and then fell through it. When price came up to this one, it went through it like it's not even there. You know, so you might look at that and say, well, how does that happen? You know, these are decent levels. Look at how strong price moved down to this level. Well, you need a profit margin. The profit margin is the distance between your two levels. Okay, let me show you. Okay, because the distance between these two, one of the, uh, we, call the, we call these things odds enhancers in the, uh, in the extended learning track program at Online Trading Academy. And one of the, one of the odds, most important odds enhancers is profit margin. Just because, here's, here's, the, here's the important part. Just because you have a supply level and a demand level does not mean you have a trade. You have to have a significant distance in between these two. Without that, that is high risk, risk trading. Understand that the greater the distance between your two opposing levels for, for potential trades around the corner, the greater the distance between these two, your, your risk-reward is becoming much better, and the probability of the trade is also dramatically increasing because you're moving farther away from equilibrium and, and much farther out on the, on, the, on the curve, right? In other words, you're stretching the rubber band more and more. So, okay. So if you start doing this and you start taking every level that shows up, yeah, they're not going to work, and they shouldn't. So here's the thing. Because the risk-reward here is not ideal, okay, you know, understand that that also um, hurts the probability of the trade working, okay? Small profit margins are always found around equilibrium. Large profit margins are found out at the extremes. That's why we go through our... our uh, kind of our three-step process, right? Well, 
Bill, stick to larger time frames if you want to, but that's not the main point. It, it's a good point there, but it's not the main point. The main point is whatever time frame you're looking at, make sure there's significant distance in between your levels, and those are the trading opportunities that are likely to work out best. You're right, Rob. Price also stalled in front of that buy level. Yeah, this is a big, big red flag saying uh, do not buy here if this starts happening right before your level because that just hurts the profit margin, uh, which it did when price came back into there. AB, that's going to be... Uh, that's going to be up to you. So the bigger you make that number, the better. You don't want to make it too big so that you don't get any trades. But, uh, you know, I look, I look for at least three to one to the first, uh, uh, target. Okay. And, and again, again, I, I also go over those odds enhancers. So that's important. Uh, Jose, do you look at the indexes or confirmation of turns? Um, typically I'm using, uh, limit orders. Okay. All right. Yeah. So let's, let's get, uh, let's get past this and take a look at some other markets. Hopefully what we've talked about so far is, uh, makes sense to you. Keep in mind this little three-step process that we've, uh, talked about. Okay. Doesn't mean you have to use these exact time frames, but make sure you use some kind of combination of, uh, of time frames like that. Okay. Here is the dollar, uh, Canadian. Right. Someone I think SW wanted to look at this one, right? Okay. Aussie Canadian. I'm sorry. Okay. We can pull that one up. No problem. Let me get to it here. All right, SW, I figure since you're typing capital letters, you must really want to look at this market. So let's do it. So again, let's, let's, now, now, if you haven't noticed with me, uh, in the past, I am, uh, extremely mechanical. I'm, I'm, uh, extremely rule based. Uh, I don't ever stray from my rules. You could put, uh, the best strategy in the world in front of me. I am not interested. I do what I do and it works for me and I just stick to the rules. So, Having said that, I'm going to start right with this daily chart here, okay? And there it is. You should be able to see it. I just, uh, I just recaptured, uh, took the picture of it for you, okay? So we are in an uptrend on this chart, right? Yeah, Darko, we'll look at as many as we can, uh, given our, given our time here. So here we have the Aussie Canadian on a daily chart. The slope of the moving average is up. No need to say more than that. We're in an uptrend. Step number one is done. We're looking, we're thinking we want to be a buyer. But without looking at the bigger time frame, I don't know how much, how much uh, room this uptrend has left. So I definitely want to see that. Okay? So therefore, let's go larger time frame, the weekly chart. Okay, there it is. Uh, let me just, yeah, let me capture this for you. Yeah, Jason, I agree. It is nearing some supply. So, this is why we use multiple time frame analysis. Or I should say, if you if you are using multiple time frames, this is why it's so important to look at uh, look at it this way. So that uptrend on the daily looks so good, right? Nice smooth uptrend. Just keep buying pullbacks. However, where does every uptrend end and where does every downtrend begin? At larger time frame supply, right? Okay. When we come to this weekly chart here, we see that yes, we're in an uptrend. But that uptrend is likely to have uh, to, to either take a big pause or completely end very soon because of what we have on this weekly chart. Okay. So again, just the opposite of the market we were just looking at. We can certainly look to buy pullbacks to demand levels, but we probably want to look a little bit lower on the curve. So if we if we go you know to that daily chart to look for levels or or something smaller. Um, you know, we want to make sure we're not looking at something too close to current price because current price on this weekly chart is is not that far from that big picture supply level. Okay? Makes sense. All right. Now, this time, okay. So now, step number three, uh, let's go to, now, first of all, on, on the larger time or, or position, uh, yeah, let me let me blow this up for you a little bit. So for, 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 uh, traders, and we have many members who take longer term position trades in these markets as well, okay, we may have an opportunity to do that soon in this market for a longer term play. If you remember months ago, we, we had that in the, uh, we had a nice big long one, uh, in the British pound, right? Same scenario here, potentially with the Aussie Canadian, alright? The key is, you know, the chart's telling us when to take that action and the chart's telling us when to be swing traders, alright? Okay, so let's move that up. All right, so now we know where we're at in the bigger picture. We know what the trend is on the daily chart. Let's now go down to an intraday time frame. 
And this time, I'll, I'll show you a different uh, time frame. Instead of going to the hourly chart, also use one of these time frames, which are really good. Yeah, Jack, I was agreeing with you. I, I, there's nothing wrong with taking that uh, short entry at that supply level. Okay. But there's, there's more than one way to play that. You know, if you're a longer-term position trader, you can take it for that. Uh, you can also use that level to swing trade against. Uh, even as an active day trader, if prices got up in there, you know, on the smaller time frames, you'd, you'd be, you know, you'd want to uh, sell short, you know, bet to the downside for your day trades also uh, once you got up into that level. Okay? All right. Yeah. Okay. So now we're looking at the 240-minute uh, chart. Okay, now let me just first say there is absolutely nothing magical about this 240-minute chart or an hourly chart or a 180-minute chart. This is just a nice, big intraday time frame, okay? Um, it, it, it's, it's a really nice, you know, something like this is a nice time frame to look at. Okay. So remember, we don't want to find any demand levels up here around the 95, 94 area because it's a little too close to that larger time frame supply. So what we want to do is scroll down the price ladder until we find our drop base rally that is fresh, one that has not been revisited yet. And when we do that, we arrive at this area right here. Okay? So I'm going to put a couple lines in this area. Okay, one there, one right there. I'm going to keep these in, and, and you know, on our next uh, FX Street uh, sessions, we'll go back and review some of these, okay, that, we, that we've looked at here. All right? So now I'm picking a demand level, number one, that is, that is on the right spot on the curve in the larger time frame. Number two, uh, number two, it's a fresh level, meaning since prices left the level, they have not been back to this area. Okay. All right. And uh, why is that important? Well, understand what these levels, you know, a lot of the books say when you hit a support or resistance level, you know, demand or supply level, um, you know, don't take the first, you know, don't take the first time, the first pullback or the first time it hits that level. And, and, uh, they say that because then they, then they follow up and say, we want to see that level tested a little bit. We want to make sure there's buyers or sellers there. Okay? Well, what, what the, uh, you know, be careful with that because what the book is really saying is, don't take the low risk, high reward and high probability entry, you know, wait for, wait for the low probability entry, right? And the reason why that is, you know, the reason why we want to focus on that first pullback in price to that level, is, is because this is, this is exactly the same mathematical equation as, as how you chop down a tree. Not that I like to use that example, but, uh, you know, think about it. Every time you take a swing at that tree, you are removing some of the mass from the tree. Okay? Therefore, the tree is more, more likely to fall. Okay? It's the same thing here. Every time you, with each pullback into this level, this demand level, some of the buyers that are sitting there, some of the demand gets filled. Therefore, the demand is decreasing, which means your odds are decreasing. Okay? All right. So let's, uh, let's move on here. Yeah, Jason, you know, that's, that's, that's pretty good. That's a pretty strong move. Is there a better demand level, uh, someone's asking, at 93.25? So that'd be up in here. The reason why we wouldn't go with 93.25 because this whole thing here is rally base rally, which we're not really in love with because these types of levels are always found in, by definition, the fact it's a rally base rally means it's always going to be in the middle of a move. If you want to trade out at the extremes, we go with the drop base rally. Okay? Those are, those are our extreme levels. Uh, odds a little bit better there. Janita, you know, I don't know. I mean, some, some of the books are, uh, I'm sure that, you know, there's good information in books, but you have to be careful, uh, you know, you know, a lot of people, they keep writing books. They, what do they spend their time doing? Writing books. So just, just be careful with that. The best thing that you can do as a trader, and, and this is my biggest, uh, you know, most important piece of the inf information here, which, which actually has nothing to do with our topic, but, but I'll just say it anyway. The more that you can bring your simp the simple logic of how you buy and sell anything in every other part of your life into the trading world, the better you're going to do. Okay, um, when you go to the grocery store, you know, most people, you know, are smart shoppers. When you buy a car, when you buy a house, right? In all those scenarios, people try to get a good deal on what they want. In trading, everybody throws that simple logic out the window, and everybody wants to buy after a big rally in price and buy a big breakout. 
and uh, and all those things, right? It doesn't make any sense. For some reason, people throw all simple logic out the window when it comes to the trading markets. They think it's some complicated, fancy mathematical, uh, you know, world, and uh, it's certainly not. Okay. And uh, another question here from uh, Bluesman. Bluesman, you from Chicago? Uh, the manner in which price gets to the supply area, choppy or long bars, can affect the way it leaves the suppliers. Is this correct? If so, why? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so what he's saying there is the way that the way that price reaches a level, uh, kind of, and he didn't say this, but I'll kind of add this to it: uh, the way price reaches a level goes hand in hand with with how it's how it leaves level. Let me show you an example: um, the trade that uh, we took the other day. Um, I'll show you right here. You'll see that's exactly the case. Let me just grab the chart for you. So on the trading session I did for our group on um, our Sunday session, that led to this trade right here. Take a look at how prices came into the level. Okay. This is that chart. Notice the strong drop in price and almost an equal rally out of that level. That's because within these red candles here, there's really not much to stop a rally in price. So when price comes down and came down into our level, you know, it kind of shot right back up, uh, uh, right back up. Okay. You're going to see that all over the place. And if you look left here, there's, there's just no, there, this is a pocket of, of price action where there's really no supply or demand. That's why you're seeing prices move so quickly through those levels. Okay. Um, all right. Let me make sure I'm uh, keeping up with these. Yeah, Rob, I agree. Most books repeat uh, previous books. <coughs> yeah, Darko, uh, at some point maybe. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe when I'm all done trading. Uh, yeah, can we look at the euro? Yeah, well, let's look at another market here. Oh, sorry about that. Amber, I was just answering uh, your question there. Yeah, just because, remember, remember, there's just because we have a level doesn't mean it's a level that we, that we want to take a trade at. Remember, we run through this little probability scoring system. Um, I'll try to get into that a little bit more. And what's really good about it is it forces us to ignore these levels like 6,800 and focus on the key levels uh, like this one down here. And that's a lot. And that's one of the that's one of the things that comes up sometimes uh, in the in the uh, articles like those lessons from the pros at Online Trading Academy. I know a lot of people read those. And uh, those questions come up from people that read the letters. And, and my first, you know, one of my first responses to those is, well, yeah, there there we do have a very specific set of rules criteria that, that, you know, lead us to the proper levels and force us to ignore the other levels, but those are not things that you're, I think you're ever really going to see in detail in a free trading article, um, and, and the main reason is because if, if I put stuff like that out there, I would get uh, death threats probably from our XLT members, so remember, this is all about having an edge, so um, if you don't have an edge here, you know, don't compete. All right, let's... Uh, Let's keep going. So let's take a look at the euro. Again, three-step process. Okay. Uh, Gary, it, it, it depends which, uh, yeah, on, on the daily chart there, we were very extended from that moving average. And again, that's why, even though, Gary, good point, on the daily chart, we were in a, it, look, you know, it looked like we were in a downtrend. But remember, that downtrend is likely to end and reverse at larger time frame demand. So by knowing that, that allows us to be in the next trend you know, as it's starting, as it's beginning, which is way before you'll get your higher highs and higher lows and and all that other stuff, right? Euro, in and uptrend, okay? We see that on the daily chart, step one. I'll take a picture of it for you here, okay? This will just take a, take a minute because it's very clear, right? Everybody, uh, the trades Forex, we see the euros in an uptrend, right? There's a daily chart. When we come to the weekly chart, and let's do that now. Where are we in the bigger picture with regard to supply and demand? Uh, there is the chart. Okay. So we see that um, even though we're in an uptrend, you know, we still have a little ways to go till we get to this, you know, bigger uh, supply level above. All right. I'll just draw some lines in here. So in this market, you know, we could buy pullbacks to levels that are, you know, not all that far from current price if there are significant levels. Okay, if there are levels close to current price, uh, we can we can look to buy pullbacks to those levels, and we'll take a look in just a second. 
right? You see how this euro on the weekly is much farther from its big supply level than than the uh, the others were. Okay. All right. So now let's come down to a smaller time frame, and this time let's go to uh, I'll show you a different time frame just just to show you that what you know what different time frames look like. Um, I don't ever bounce around like this. You know, you, you, once you have your workspace set, you know, the more routine uh, you can be, I think uh, the better. Okay. Now, what's, what's interesting about this euro on a smaller time frame, let me just take a picture of the chart here. Notice where current price is, 145.55. And notice we have, we're coming into this kind of pocket of nothing here, right? We still have to get through, you know, price right now is sitting into these prior uh, demand levels. Now we've been here a number of times, so the odds are that this is, uh, you know, this this area may not hold, right? Because we've been here so many times. And then also too, notice below we've got this pocket of nothing. And as we just saw, you know, prices, if and when they get down to this area, they can tend to move pretty quick through there. So we'd be looking for a demand level um, a bit lower. All right, but. Um, I just noticed the time, and I see that we're, uh, we're we're about out of time here. So I want to take a, a minute here to, okay. Let me uh, just a second here. Uh, let me throw this in here for you. So I just typed my email address in there: sidon at tradingacademy.com. Okay. All right. Uh, there it is: sidon at tradingacademy.com. If you have any questions, uh, definitely send me an email. And uh, yep. Yeah, uh, Benny, I do do. Uh, I did that last Sunday session. That's what I was showing you on the first slide that I showed you. So um, I do do some of the XLT Forex sessions. But thanks for your time. Hopefully that was helpful. And again, if you need more information, email me. Watch those recordings. Uh, we're here to help. And uh, for those going to the conference, uh, congrats. It's a great time.